What's up everybody? In this video, I'm going to show you how to monitor your network for free. For this video tutorial, I'm going to be using Zabbix. I'm going to show you how to download, install and configure Zabbix. With Zabbix, you can monitor all kinds of networking equipment, servers, application, services and etc. You can monitor a lot of stuff with Zabbix. So here's first thing we need to do. We need to click on download and I will put link in the description below. Once we get to the download, you can install Zabbix on Linux OSs or what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually click on Zabbix appliance. I'm going to still install a Zabbix on my virtual machine and you can use for that virtual box or Hyper-V or VMware. But for this video tutorial, I'm going to be using Hyper-V. But instead of downloading Hyper-V 2012 right here, I'm just going to download the installation CD and DVD. This is going to be online installation. So if you are going to be installing on something else besides virtual machine, make sure your system is connected to the internet. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on download right here and then I'm going to save this file. Once the download is complete, I'm going to bring up my Hyper-V and in here I'm going to create virtual machine really quick. And right here, I'm going to choose image file and I'm going to navigate to my downloads because that's where I'm going to be downloading. That's the application, the one I just downloaded. And I'm going to click on open and I'm going to click on next. I'm going to click on finish. Okay, now virtual machine is created. What I'm going to do, I'm going to click start and I'm going to click connect. And in here, we need to click on install Zabbix application. And now it's going to start installing Zabbix. Once your system done installing, what we need to do, we need to log in here within the virtual machine. We need to use our default credentials and the username is going to be root and password is going to be Zabbix. And then press enter. And right here, once you log in, what we need to do, we need to type IP ADDR and then show and then press enter. So now this is going to show us the IP address of Zabbix. So here's what we need to do. We need to right now, we need to open our internet browser and we need to type the IP address that we got. It's the IP address of the Zabbix server is right here. 192.168.1.172 and the username and password is going to be admin and password is Zabbix. So now we open our internet browser and right here I'm going to type 192.168.1.171 and I'm going to press enter and right here username admin and then password is Zabbix and then I'm going to click on sign in and I'm going to save password for now. That's it. You have successfully installed Zabbix. So here's what we need to do. We need to add a couple hosts. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a switch and I'm going to add a server. So what we need to do, we need to click on the configuration and then right here, we need to click on hosts. And in here, we need to click on create host. And right here, we need to type, I'm just going to name it switch. And then for a group, we need to select. And right here, we need to choose what this is. And since it's networking device, I'm just going to use templates networking device and I'm going to click on select right here. I'm going to click add what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be using SNMP. And right here, I need to type the IP address of my switch. It's 192.168.1.15. And right here for community string, I created password. Your could be something else. And then we need to click on add. Then we need to click on switch one more time and right here we need to click on templates and in here we need to link new template. We need to select and then select one more time here and we're just going to choose network devices and in here I'm going to scroll down since my switch I'm using Actron is not in here. I'm just going to select network generic device SNMP and I'm going to click select and I'm going to click update. And while it's connecting to my switch, I'm going to create one more host. I'm going to click on create and in here I'm going to type server. And for group, I'm going to click on select 
and then I'm going to click operation system because this is going to be server and then I'm going to click on select. And then in here, same thing, I'm going to click on add and I'm going to choose SNMP. So you have to make sure SNMP is enabled on your server or on any of your computers, the one that you're going to try to monitor. So first thing we need to do, this is on server. We need to click on start and we need to type services. And then we need to choose services. Once this is going to open up, we need to scroll down and we need to find SNMP service. We have to make sure it's here and we have to make sure it's running. And then what we need to do, we need to double click on it. And then we need to click on agent. We have to make sure every service is select here. And then we need to click on security. So right here, we need to create community string. So to do that, just click on add, live read only and type whatever community string would you like to type. I left password. So and then in here, we need to either accept SNMP packets from any host or what we can do, we can choose a specific host. If we choose that, then we need to type the IP address of Zabbix. And the IP address of Zabbix was 192.168.1.171 and then press add. If we do that, this is a more secure way in case if somebody else is on your network is trying to monitor or just fooling around, they're not going to be able to pull any SNMP traffic and then we need to click apply and then OK. For example, if your SNMP service is not here, you see only SNMP traps. What you need to do, you need to install SNMP service. I'm going to link video in the description below how to install SNMP service on Windows Server and on Windows 10. Once this is done, we need to close SNMP. We need to close services and now we go back to Zabbix. So in here, we need to type IP address of our server. And again, if you don't know the IP address, you can click on start, type CMD and type IP config and then press enter. And right here, this is my IP address. I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste right here. And then for SNMP, I created password. Yours could be something else. And then click on add and then once again click on server and then click on templates select right here we need to delete this and then click on select one more time and this is going to be operation system and right here we need to choose windows snmp and you can choose all the other operation system that's out there available and then click on select and then click on update okay once this is done you can see my switch already established the connection with the SNMP and now we just have to wait until server is going to establish connection as well. Once the connection is established, what we need to do, we also need to wait a little bit until it's going to detect every graph that can be monitored. For example, on my switch, I have 24 port switch. It's going to detect at least 24 or maybe even more graphs that we can monitor. And there's one more thing what we need to do. We need to choose server or switch. And then we need to click on discovery and right here we need to choose both of the switches and then we need to click execute now and then enable and then same thing go back to other hosts click on on server choose discovery and in here select all of the servers and then click enable okay and then execute now select again and then execute now and then go back to hosts and once we try to discover, you can see the graph number is updating. So now what we need to do, we need to click on graph. And right here, we, can, we need to choose what exactly we would like to monitor because it's going to create 27 graphs. I'm going to leave every single one of them. And then in here, same thing for server is going to create 18 graphs. So now what we can do, we can click on monitoring tab. And right here, we need to click on dashboard and then we need to click on hosts. So in here in hosts, what we can do, we can choose switch and then click on graphs. And now it's going to show you graph for every possible interface that we can monitor. So we can scroll down. You can see every single interface has a dedicated graph. I don't really have any data right now on it because there is nothing actually running on this switch. I'm going to try to transfer some files so that way we're going to start seeing some data. Then same thing if we go back and we click on hosts, 
we can choose server and then server we can click on graphs same thing we're going to be able to get graph for every possible service that we can monitor and if you scroll down you can see cpu utilization you can see all my hard drive how much they're filled and everything else and then physical memory this is how much is in use right now and if we're going to leave it running for a little bit we're going to start getting a lot more data actually on here so then what we can do we can click on dashboard we're going to create and we're going to add a map here so we need to navigate to maps and then in here we're just going to use this one local network we can create a new one but i'm just going to use default one and in here what we need to do we're going to need to click on edit map so what i'm going to do i'm going to move this server right in the center this is my Zabbix server the one that is running and you can change the settings just by clicking on the server itself you can change all the settings over here i'm going to click close so what i'm going to do i'm going to click on map element and it's going to add a new element so i'm going to leave it right here for example and i'm going to change this element i'm going to name it as a switch so i'm going to click on image i'm going to click on host and in here i'm going to click on select i'm going to close this and i'm going to choose a switch or from networking devices this is from the template that we're going to use because this is my switch and i'm going to choose switch so it's going to bring up my switch so right here we need to change the icon from the default from the server i'm going to change to a switch and i'm going to use 64 and i'm going to click on apply and then close so then what i'm going to do i'm going to highlight both of the devices and i'm going to add a link between them and then i'm going to apply and then close so then i'm going to add one more element i'm going to move it right here and this is going to be my server i'm going to click on it in images i'm going to click on hosts right here i'm going to click on select and then i'm going to close this template and i'm going to click on select again and i'm going to choose operation system because this is my server and i'm going to click on server and in here i'm going to change this to 64 so it's not going to be that big and then I'm going to click on apply and close. Same thing. I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to add a link. And then I'm going to apply and I'm going to click close. Once the map is complete, we can click on update and then click OK. And then we'll go back to dashboard. And in here, we need to click on edit dashboard and then add a widget. And right here, we need to choose map. And then in here, we need to select and we need to click local network because that's the only one we have and then we need to click on add so it's going to add this map over here so what i'm going to do i'm going to select this i'm going to shrink it down and then i'm going to move this map and i'm going to put it right here and then once you're done moving stuff around what we need to do we need to save changes once the changes are saved so here's what we got here we have the clock we can add more widgets but we got two main tabs we got problems here so if there's any problem it's going to be detected right here and then this is the map and we have links created between our Zabbix server and a switch and a server so here's what I'm going to do I'm going to unplug a switch right now and in a few minutes this is going to turn different color a few minutes later here's the message that I was getting so I got one problem right here switch it's unavailable by ICMP and right here you can see that my switch actually turned red and you can see that arrow is pointing that the switch is unavailable by icmp ping so this is how the zabbix software could be very useful it takes a little bit of time to configure and you can do so much more with this i just show you basic things like for example how to add switches and servers you can do so much more with this i'm not going to go into details but this software can be used in any enterprise environment because this is open source and it's free if this video was helpful to you press that like button and don't forget to subscribe thanks for watching